Hello, and welcome to an A2A Simulations development update for November 25th, 2011. Today I'd like to talk about the hydraulic system in both general terms and our latest AccuSim Warbirds. To be able to fly an aircraft, you have to be able to move things. You have to move your ailerons, your rudder, your elevator. You have to raise your gear, drop your flaps, etc. When a surface like an aileron or an elevator needs a relatively small amount of force to move, Mechanical linkage works. It's basically moved by the strength of the pilot's arm. However, if you take a look at this P-40, for that small pilot to physically move that gear up and into that well will take a considerable amount of effort. The same also applies to the flaps. There are some aircraft of this size that do have mechanically retracting and extending flaps. And you can take a look at this uh, Messerschmitt 109. Now notice how long it takes to extend and retract these flaps. This is a mechanical wheel that is on a very low gear, so it takes, I think, about 30 turns of that wheel to lower or raise the flaps. It's a nice, simple, reliable device. However, the time it takes and the effort to move these flaps is a little excessive. So the early aircraft during World War II started to incorporate a hydraulic system to move these heavier items. I just want to take a quick second to show everybody what a basic hydraulic system does. Instead of using complex mechanical linkage to transmit power, hydraulics use pressurized fluid to transmit that power. The hydraulic system is based on Pascal's principle. This principle means that it is very efficient to transmit power through fluids. And hydraulics were made for aircraft because you can take small little hydraulic lines and send them through all these cavities and twists and turns and provide power to virtually every area of that aircraft. That little tail wheel back there is driven by hydraulic pressure. Two little lines go all the way along that fuselage back to that tail wheel. Let's pull up the Spitfire Mark I. In the Spitfire Mark I, the pilot pressurizes the hydraulic system with a hand pump. This little development utility on the screen shows us gear pressure, the gear locks, and the hydraulic system pressure. Now I'm going to move this lever down, which diverts pressure to raise our landing gear. Now with this lever down, when I start pumping, the locks will be released and the gear will start to come up. Now watch. The left block is released. This is no different from pumping up a tire in your bike. In this case, you're pumping oil and we're lifting this tire. Every single time I pump, I'm pumping more fluid into the channel. The pressure builds and it pushes the tire up. We just use hydraulic pressure and our arm strength to lift the gear into the well. Okay. Let's go to the Mark II. The Mark II Spitfire has an engine-driven hydraulic pump. Now this pump supplies us with a continual flow of hydraulic fluid and pressure throughout the system. Now look how easy this is to operate our landing gear. Now instead of the pilot physically raising or lowering his landing gear, you simply have to move the lever and the pump will do all the work for you. Look at that, our gear is locked down and the pressure is building all by itself. Now, the P-40 has an electrically driven hydraulic pump. It's located in the fuselage. And the pilot has a little button on his yoke. And when he presses that button, the hydraulic pump runs and it builds pressure in the system. As this P-40 was being built, it was apparent that we were going to have to train our customers how to use the system. And I asked Rob Rogalski, modeler of this P-40, I said, Rob, can we get this aircraft on jacks? This would be a great way of training to use the flaps and the gear and the hydraulic system, the P-40. After we implemented these jacks, we ran across an Army training film. And I could not believe it. They did the exact same thing to teach their pilots that we're doing to teach our simulation pilots. They put the aircraft on jacks, and this instructor went through the procedures with this pilot so he understood the system. So let's put the aircraft on jacks. I want to show you how this works. 
Okay, we have just taken off. Throttle is forward. Mixture and propeller are also both forward. We pull the landing gear lever up, and we press and hold our hydraulic pump button on our yoke. Now once that landing gear is in the bay, you continue to hold the hydraulic pump button for three more seconds. One, two, three. That ensures that the gear is securely up and the locks are enabled. Now grab your hand pump to verify that the gear is up. It must be stuck. I can hardly move it. When the pump is solid, the landing gear is locked in retracted position. Now we have broken our hydraulic pump in the back, so let's go over what we do. Now we're on final. We lower our landing gear and we press our hydraulic button. Nothing's happening. Okay, so we reach down for our hand pump. You can see our landing gear is lowering. This is doing the same thing our electric pump does. We're just doing it by hand. Okay, the gear is down. Now instead of holding our button for three seconds, we continue to pump until that pump gets stiff. Now we're going to simulate a complete hydraulic system failure. You can see we've created a major hydraulic leak. I'm just going to run the pump to push this along. Now watch our hydraulic level very carefully. At some point, it's going to run dry. Okay, see now the fluid its not even reaching the pump. You see your pump is useless. We're basically pumping air. We can actually confirm this by looking at our payload and fuel manager right here. We have no hydraulic fluid. And uh, this should also show in our maintenance hanger. Let's pull it up. There you go. Hydraulic leak. And our crew chief has noted major hydraulic line leaks. Okay, so now we're on final. Our throttle is pulled back. And we're going to lower our landing gear. Our hydraulic pump is pressed. And we can see nothing's happening. Okay, at this point, we don't know what the problem is, so we're going to reach for a hand pump. Okay, still nothing's happening. Now we know we have a major hydraulic system problem because there's absolutely no pressure in that pump. That hand pump is our hydraulic gauge. But this P40 does not quit here because it has its own completely independent emergency hydraulic system. Now to operate the emergency system, put the handle on the emergency pump. Okay, and we start pumping. And look at that. Our gear is lowering. This is the emergency hydraulic system at work. You can also feel the hydraulic pressure in this pump just like the other pump. We pump it until the gear is securely down. It's important to know that the emergency hydraulic system only lowers your main landing gear, can't be used for flaps, and it does not bring your tailwheel down. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you into our P-51 Mustang. Dealing with a hydraulic system failure in a P-51 is quite different than in the P-40. That is because while the P-40 deploys its landing gear forward and into the wind, the P-51 deploys its gear sideways along the wings. And this helps to give the P-51 what we call a free-falling landing gear system. Now we can also test this live in our P-51. Because in the P-51 we have a hydraulic release lever located right here. Now when we pull this lever, all of our hydraulic pressure is released. And pulling this lever also unlocks the fairing doors. So when those locks are released with no hydraulic pressure, gravity just pulls them out. 
Okay, now we can lower our landing gear. When you move the landing gear lever down, the landing gear will fall by its own weight. To ensure that it extends all the way and locks into place, in the United States Army Training Manual, under Hydraulic System Failure, if you scroll down, they say Rocket to Lock It. Okay, and you can practice that yourself. It's actually quite easy. Now every time you shut your P-51 down, you should lower your flaps and pull the hydraulic release handle. The hydraulic system in the P-51 maintains 1,000 PSI, even at idle. Sometimes you'll see a P-51 pilot lowering his flaps just as the engine is winding down. But what we're going to do is we're going to shut the engine off first. There we go. Now keep an eye on that hydraulic pressure gauge. Because I still have hydraulic pressure, I'm going to drop the flaps. Pressure's bleeding off. Going towards zero. Flaps are down, but it's still a little pressure indicated on the gauge. Now I'll pull the uh, hydraulic relief valve. The fairing doors are unlocked and they fall down by their own weight. Also, don't forget to push your hydraulic release handle back in for the next flight. This way you leave the aircraft in the same configuration it was when you entered the cockpit. Now this is the proper way to rest your P-51 between flights. And there's our own Captain Jake, earning his keep. There you go, great, thanks. All right. And you can do one on the back, on the same one, yeah, one on both sides, and the second one will move it all. We try to do what we can to make you instinctively behave like an aircraft owner. Because you can't master an aircraft unless you know what she's made of. So just take the time to get to know her. And the reward is you becoming the best pilot you can be. Okay, before we end this video, I want to take you back to the P-40 and show you a few more things. With AccuSim, we spent a lot of time on sound for both function and just giving you the entire aircraft. Just check out the switches on this electrical panel. Even with this primer, you can actually hear the slight variations with each stroke. Okay, let's show you the Curtis Electric Prop. It's a dual function prop. It can be run in both constant speed, automatic mode, or it can be manually controlled. Let's show you the inner workings of this electric prop in flight. This is now an automatic constant speed mode. Look at that ammeter, it's fluctuating back and forth. That propeller's making little minor adjustments to hold that RPM for you. Now we advance the prop. The RPM settles. Now we pull it back. Now let me show you manual mode. See? 
propeller only moves when you tell it to. Look at that. As solid as a rock. Okay, lastly, I want to show you something we're very excited about. If you have ever looked at a startup checklist for any of these large warbirds, you start the engine on primer alone with your mixture off. So watch how we start this engine. Let's prime it four times. Okay, now there is primer in the engine. Use our wobble pump to prime the fuel lines. We're now going to energize the starter. Wind up the inertia wheel. Our mixture is off. Now when we engage, we are going to continue to prime the engine. Now keep in mind, we're going to kind of starve this engine and keep running this aircraft in primer to demonstrate the fuel delivery system for you. running on primer. I'm going to let the engine die a little bit. Oh, we're going to lose it. What? Here we go. All right. Let's advance the mixture. Ah, now that's the sound of an Allison. Okay, now we have a nice running idle. All right, we'll finish this up with the takeoff. Now this aircraft doesn't have a lot of the safeties you have in the P-51. It's very much hands-on. You can easily apply too much power in the P-40. Here we go, gradual power. As you can see, this aircraft needs a lot of right rudder on takeoff. Okay, this concludes our Accusum development update. Thank you for watching.